some people still turn their noses up at electric cars. And honestly, it's understandable. Nobody wants to be stuck for hours at a charger, waiting for the battery to decide to charge, while a gasoline car solves everything in five minutes at the gas station. But that excuse in 2026 is hanging by a thread, or rather, by a 900 kilobytes cable. Tesla has just opened a new chapter with the Model 2, and it not only shortens charging time, it reverses the logic of modern refueling. We're talking about a leap so absurd, it seems like science fiction. Charging from 10% to 80% in 4 minutes and 37 seconds. Yes, less time than it takes you to choose a song from a playlist. The comparison doesn't even make sense anymore. While other high-end models are still competing to see who can charge in 18 or 20 minutes, Tesla has thrown the bar out the window. The Model 2 isn't competing with what already exists. It's playing in a different league. And you know what's even more insane? This feat didn't come with miraculous tricks or empty promises. It came with pure engineering, field testing, and a system that moves energy like water in a pressurized pipe, but without leaking heat or compromising safety. The initial tests at Giga Texas were almost surreal. People who saw it live said it seemed like magic. The car's lights flashed, the indicators went off, and suddenly, 10 80% battery charge. No burning smell, no excessive heating, just clean, cold efficiency. The craziest thing is that Tesla achieved this in an entry-level car, with an advertised price of 7,899. In other words, you can't even say that innovation is only for the rich anymore. Now, charging speed is accessible. That's a real revolution. And there's something few people have noticed. The Model 2 is paving the way for what could be the end of range anxiety. Not because it can travel a thousand kilometers, but because it doesn't make you wait. This change in mindset is much more powerful than it seems. You no longer need to worry about leaving home with a full battery. If there's a supercharger nearby, five minutes and you're ready to go. This transforms the electric car into something as agile as any combustion engine. To achieve this absurd charging speed, Tesla had to play with power levels previously only seen in heavy industries. We're talking about 900 kilobar being injected directly into a car battery. Just to compare, most fast chargers today don't even come close to 300 kilobars. And yet, Tesla made it look easy. It's almost like putting an entire residential transformer to work just to charge your car. But with one detail, without frying the cables, without exploding anything, everything under control. And if there's one thing Elon Musk has made clear, it's that this isn't just any update. It's a milestone, a game changer. The promise is simple, faster charging than gasoline. Sounds absurd, yes. But the difference is that now it's real. This changes everything in the electric mobility game. And those stuck with older charging models will feel like they're stuck in a stray cart in the middle of the road. This is the famous turning point that catches everyone off guard, especially those who swore Tesla was falling behind. To handle such insane power without causing a thermal meltdown, Tesla had to completely reinvent the way energy is transferred. Fast charging wasn't enough. It had to be done safely, efficiently, and without compromising battery life. The solution was ingenious. Liquid-cooled cables, designed with internal channels that resemble human veins. They transport electricity and cooling fluid simultaneously, in a synchronicity that looks more like a living organism operating at high performance. These cables are a kind of electrical artery, pulsing with energy at an accelerated pace, but without overheating. And most impressively, they are safe to touch, even when transferring enough energy to power a small substation. This means that the average driver, when connecting their Model 2, doesn't need to wear special gloves, nor worry about shocks or accidents. Just plug it in and you're done. The cable does all the dirty work, keeping the system stable as if nothing were happening. Inside, 
the charger communicates with the car in real time. Every second of charging is negotiated between the battery, motor, and charging station, like a well-tuned trio playing the same tune. If any part overheats, the system automatically reduces the speed. If everything is under control, it accelerates. This fluid communication between components is what allows it to push 900 kilodollars without anything moving. It's almost as if the car says, you can send more, and the charger replies, it's still cold. This thermal intelligence was essential to avoid the chaos that would normally come with so much power. Without it, the cables would melt, the connectors would burn, and the battery would turn into an oven. But here, the opposite happens. The system remains ice cold, even when it seems to be at its limit. Tesla has basically transformed recharging into a biothermodynamic process in which each component adjusts as if it had its own consciousness. Incidentally, it's worth mentioning that this technology didn't come from nowhere. It's the result of years of testing with advanced materials, thermal sensors distributed along the cables, and millimeter precise liquid flow control. The cooling fluid passes through pumps that adapt the pressure and volume according to the heat generated. It's as if the cable were breathing, drawing in cool air when needed and releasing the excess when it's stabilized. All of this happens without the user needing to touch anything. And the most curious thing, even with this complexity, the driver's experience remains simple. The charger's design was made to be intuitive, lightweight, and with visual feedback. A ring of light around the charging port shows the progress, temperature, and status in real time. Pulsating green, it's charging like a rocket. Solid blue, it's entered safe mode. Red, something is wrong and the system has paused automatically. But honestly, error reports are almost non-existent. If there's one thing Tesla likes to do, it's play with the impossible. And at the heart of this new machine, called Model 2, is the most daring motor the brand has ever created. It's not just powerful. It's intelligent, lightweight, and more resistant than ever before. The big breakthrough was abandoning traditional models and embracing an idea that seemed exaggerated, using carbon fiber in a rotor that spins at extremely high speeds. Sounds like rocket science? Well, it's almost that. But the detail that makes all the difference is that this fiber was tensioned to thousands of pounds of force. What does this change in practice? Everything. When the engine spins, heat and centrifugal force tend to cause the rotor to expand and lose stability. But with these ultra-thin carbon strips, the rotor does the opposite. It compresses as it spins. This keeps the magnetic alignment always perfect without oscillations and avoids those microscopic losses that turn into wasted heat. It's a type of precision that, until recently, was only seen in military laboratories or aircraft turbines. Now, it's there, in a popular car costing $7,819.90. Of course, that wasn't enough. To handle the energy spikes from the 900 kilowatt charger, Tesla had to go a step further. Beneath that rotor lies a system that looks like it came straight out of a cryogenics lab. Micro-cooling channels with liquid nitrogen. That's right, an inert, ultra-cold gas running inside the motor to lower the temperature by up to 38% during the most intense moments. It's as if the motor takes an ice bath every time it accelerates hard or recharges. This nitrogen wasn't chosen randomly. It doesn't react with anything. It's super light, and it has an extraordinary thermal capacity. But the challenge here was maintaining the right balance. If it gets too cold, the materials contract and lose efficiency. If it gets too hot, it loses conductivity. So Tesla created an automatic regulation system that adjusts the fluid density in real time, according to the car's behavior. It's literally an adaptive organism that reacts to the environment as needed. This obsession with thermal control allowed for another bold move, operating the system at voltages exceeding 1,000 volts. This was practically taboo until recently, reserved for racing cars or spaceships. But now, 
with everything monitored, cooled, and adjusted in real time. It's possible to use this high voltage without risk of explosion, overheating, or premature wear. This guarantees a consistent level of performance, even in repeated sessions of extreme use. And what commands this spectacle of power and delicacy is the silicon carbide inverter. This component is the brain that transforms the battery's electricity into movement. And with the new generation of SIC transistors, it manages to do this with almost zero loss. In the past, a good portion of the energy turned into heat before even reaching the wheels. Now, it becomes torque, fast, clean, and direct. The result? Less waste, more acceleration, and less time plugged in. If there's one thing that has always bothered people about electric cars, it's the brutal way energy enters the batteries. That continuous, unsubtle flow, like filling a bucket with a hose at full blast, fast but uncontrolled. Tesla looked at this and thought, what if, instead of forcing it to fill, we taught the energy to adapt? That's how pulse charging was born, a system that transforms recharging into a kind of electrical heartbeat. It's not just innovative, it's elegant, almost poetic, and it works. The secret lies in the type of pulse the system sends. It's not a continuous, inactive current. It's waves that change shape, frequency, and intensity depending on what the battery senses internally. If it's too hot, the pulse lengthens. If the voltage is ideal, it accelerates. Everything is measured in milliseconds. It's as if the charger listens to what the battery needs and delivers only what it can absorb without suffering. This avoids thermal stress, prevents overcharging, and, most importantly, prevents premature aging. And when we talk about aging, it's no exaggeration. In internal tests, Tesla managed to reduce cell degradation by almost 30% compared to traditional systems. It's like gaining years of useful life just by respecting the component's lifespan. It seems trivial, but in a popular car, this means more time driving without loss of performance, more range after many cycles, and of course, less battery going to waste prematurely. It's technology that preserves instead of wearing out. This sophistication doesn't stop at the battery. The motor also plays a part. Remember that idea of an integrated electrical organism? Well, in pulse charging, the motor, the inverter, and the battery constantly exchange signals. Each one reports its status, and the central system decides on the best strategy. It's literally a living ecosystem. And the brain of this operation is the adaptive control software, which acts like a nervous system, reading millions of data points per second and adjusting everything in real time. Another interesting impact is on safety. Since the voltage exceeds 1,000 riddles, the risk of overheating or thermal runaway would be extremely high in conventional systems. But with adaptive pulses, this doesn't happen. The system never pushes harder than necessary. It senses when to back off and when to move forward. It's like driving with emotional ABS. The car knows when to floor it and when to ease off. This subtle control is what allows working with such high energy levels without fear. In fact, if you've ever been afraid of battery explosions, this technology should reassure you. Because now, what enters the cell is no longer a burst of energy. It's an intelligent, almost surgical flow that respects the battery's internal chemistry. And this changes everything in the user's perception. Instead of thinking they're risking the car's integrity by using ultra-fast chargers, the driver now feels they're precisely nourishing the vehicle. Tesla's next move was more ambitious than any car improvement, restructuring its own charging network. If the Model 2 is capable of drawing 900 kilovolts in minutes, then the charging stations also need to be up to par. That's where the new generation of V5 superchargers comes in, capable of delivering up to one prun, one megawatt per vehicle. But the most insane thing is that these stations weren't just designed to be fast. They were designed to be self-sufficient, modular, and resilient. And that changes everything. These new charging stations already have a confirmed location for their first appearance. 
California, Texas, and Berlin. And they're not just charging points, they're micro power plants. Each will be equipped with megapacks, Tesla's giant batteries that store solar energy during the day and release it at night or when the grid is overloaded. The goal is simple, to remove as much load as possible from conventional electrical grids and make charging a local and clean process. It's no longer just about charging the car, it's about generating, storing, and distributing energy intelligently. The look of these V5s is also impressive. No gray, stuffy industrial structures here. They are open stations with rooftop solar panels, clean design, and full connectivity. The charger itself communicates with the car, the grid, and the user's software in real time. If you want to know if the station has stored solar energy, if it's occupied, or even what the predicted car traffic is in the next few minutes, the Tesla app shows you everything. It's energy transparency, something that never existed in traditional charging. Furthermore, Tesla is investing heavily in energy decentralization. These stations can operate in standalone mode, even if the surrounding power grid fails. In the event of a blackout, natural disaster, or cyber attack, the V5s continue operating thanks to their internal energy reserves and, of course, integration with Starlink, which keeps communication active even off-grid. It's as if each station were an island of reliable energy scattered across the map. And perhaps the most ingenious detail is the logic behind this architecture. Musk is using the same principles from the car in the outside world. Modularity, efficiency, and adaptability. If a station needs more power, it can be expanded with new modules. If the location doesn't have a stable electrical grid, it operates off-grid. Everything is designed to work in any condition, without needing permission from the utility company, without depending on government approval. Another interesting point is that, with this structure, electric cars begin to return energy to the system instead of just consuming it. During solar energy peaks, for example, megapacks can charge and then power nearby buildings, homes, or even the station itself. The idea of a consumer car is beginning to give way to a new category, the vehicle as part of the energy grid. And if that seems exaggerated, just remember that Tesla already does this in some regions of the U.S. with its residential solar panels. The idea of covering the world with superchargers seems audacious, but that's exactly what Tesla is doing. With a goal of reaching 85,000 stations by 2027, the plan now is to democratize access to ultra-fast charging. And we're not just talking about big cities or logistics corridors. The mission is to go further, to rural regions, isolated areas, communities without a stable electricity grid, and even disaster zones. To that end, Elon Musk presented the most unexpected solution of the year. Off-grid pods, mobile stations with solar panels, Starlink internet, and integrated megapacks. These pods function like nomadic superchargers. They can be shipped by truck, helicopter, or even drone. They arrive, install themselves in minutes, and are already operational. It's like putting a gas station where one never existed before. And without needing local infrastructure, this completely changes the game. Suddenly, a village in the middle of nowhere can receive electric cars with industrial-level charging. It's the kind of initiative that blends mobility with a humanitarian mission energy and connectivity at the same time. Each unit is equipped with foldable solar panels that automatically open like the petals of a technological flower. During the day, they charge the internal megapacks. At night, these battery packs release stored energy, keeping the system active 24 hours a day. And with internet via Starlink, everything works even without cell phone signal or wired network. This ensures remote monitoring, real-time software updates, and stable operation anywhere on the planet. But what's most impressive 